Hey guys, we're just waiting for Victoria, who's coming. Lacey, how are you? Give me just a sec, guys. Bear with me. I know you've got busy days ahead of you. I'm just, oh, here we go. I'm going to add you now. yes we did it oh my gosh we are champions i'm so excited me we're too this is so fun i know and i was listening to your podcast yesterday so oh, yeah. i am loving it and anybody who hasn't heard of it give it shout it out yeah, so it's called the Feminist Wellness Podcast. Um, it is free on all of the things. All the things. All the things. It's, um, yeah, it comes out weekly on Thursdays. It's on Apple Podcasts, which was formerly like iTunes or whatever. Um, Stitcher, Spotify, Pandora, iHeartRadio. It's everywhere. It's good. It's really good. The, I listened to the one yesterday about, uh, plus your voice is so soothing. Like you should record uh -huh. an audio book. Well, <laughs> someday I shall. Thank you. Yes, yes. But the Glimmers one, that was really helpful. Actually, oh, yeah. For me, I've been talking about that in a lot of my groups lately, and we've been talking about finding, and not to discount the negative, but like looking for the positive in the, in the muck, you know? Well, it's all about balance, right? Flexibility, balance. I'm like, what is balance mm -hmm. these days, right? Does that, does that exist? Right. But that being said, um, I'm so excited that we're talking. I haven't seen you in a while, so... I know. It's great to see your face. Yours too. It's a good yeah. face. Yeah. So um, I'm so glad that we're doing this too, because I've been getting a lot of questions from my clients and a lot of people online too, about like how to manage their anxiety. And I, as someone who struggles with anxiety myself, can, yeah. can totally relate, right? Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, wait a second. Um, I can relate to this and I'm taking it on myself. And I think a lot of people are mm -hmm. doing that right now. A lot of people working yeah. in the mental health field or working yep. just or not working or like listening to the parents talk and chat or whatever, trying to be support for other people. Right. We're taking it on and it's like yeah. kind of just can be destructive to our nervous systems. Yeah. It's a lot to take in. And I think particularly for folks with previous trauma or who grew up in mm -hmm. chaos or who are dealing with perfectionism or codependency, the two things I'm obsessed with working on, it can feel like a lot because it can be a reminder of a past time mm -hmm. That we and the have. body keeps score. The body remembers, right? Okay, that book was literally two feet away from me yesterday. Um, I read it and I reread it and I reread it and yeah. I reread it because there's always a little nugget more, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The thing, if I can just nerd for a second, I please. I, my, my favorite time. <laughs> oh, good. Nerd alert. Um, so. I'm obsessed with the Adverse Childhood Experiences study. I'm sure you know this study, mm -hmm. right? So it's this amazing study that looks at folks, adults who've had tra trauma, stressors, mm -hmm. chaos in their childhood, mm -hmm. and looks at health outcomes. And there's evidence of more autoimmunity, right? And things right. like Hashimoto's, Sjogren's, um, digestive concerns that are autoimmune, rheumatoid arthritis, I mean, on and on. Um, there's more evidence of irritable bowel, right? Digestive everything. Which would lead to depression, anxiety, mental health because of, yeah. The gut microbiome gets mm -hmm. effed. Mm -hmm. uh, effed mm -hmm. being the scientific term. Is that better Absolutely. lighting there? Yeah, that's better, I think. Looks great. No? Yeah, looks okay, good. great. Okay, great. Um, so Speaking of gut microbiome, not yeah, about you, I just had my celery juice way before I had my coffee, just so you know. Oh. That was the first thing I put in. Oh, I'm so glad. Was there a little food in there before that coffee? Protect that gastric lining. Mm. There's maybe there's tomorrow. A protein shake waiting for me, so I'll just put this aside a little bit. <laughs> you cutie, you cutie. There we go. Yeah, but you know the trauma and stress that we've experienced in yeah. childhood can, like, in a way, line us up for an increased sure. chance of health concerns later in life from depression, anxiety, right? Those mental health concerns. There's actual physiologic like my mm -hmm. hands hurt, right? And so I just want to be clear that that's not like a doomsday message. You're not like right. totally effed. What right. it means is that you get to do some work, right? Like the work mm -hmm. that you and I do with our clients all mm -hmm. day long to heal our mental space because it, there is no physical health without mental health and there is no mental health without physical health. Absolutely, yeah. Right, we have to attend to both of them. 
Yeah. And, and it's in our DNA sometimes too. So it means that we just have to work a little bit um, differently to challenge right. it, right? It can change the totally. in, our DNA, in our DNA, excuse me, in our, um, in our bodies. It's the way we were developed. Or maybe we had a stressed out womb that we were in, right? right. Those things can all lead to a lot of challenges later on as well. Totally. Yeah, really well put. You know, I love the old saying that like 10 different white guys claim they were the first one to say, which is <laughs> that's always the way. But um, that saying that genes load the gun environment pulls the trigger. I love that saying, right? And so people will often say to me like, oh, but I'm gonna get Hashimoto's or I'm gonna get depression because it's in my genes. I'm like, well, not necessarily. Exactly, exactly. Right? Like, there's, you've got a lot of options, actually. It, yeah. could, it may not present itself. Yeah, so that's when we look at environment, food choices. You know, we can't choose those things when we're kids. And so what we get to do is to move into acceptance mm -hmm. of what our childhood was. Acceptance isn't the same as being like, oh, it was fine. Like, mm -hmm. okay, that abuse happened. That's fine. Like, no, no, it's, it's acknowledging it, that it occurred. It's acknowledging yeah. it so we can do something about it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And from there, you're right. Like some of us, and we, you know, I won't tarry on this for too long, but have an MTHFR gene mutation. I do. I have two. You found mm -hmm. them. You found them for me. Thank you for I finding did. them. Oh, my pleasure. We got yeah. you on the right B12 yeah. folates. Um, you know, a comp team mutation, like these things matter. Mm -hmm. And it's the continued environment in which we choose our thoughts and our feelings, thoughts and our feelings, thoughts mm -hmm. and our feelings, right? Yeah. It's, that's so interesting because I, I have a client too, speaking of that, the MTH bar, who I was able to find some um, resources for, and she tested herself on that. And oh, cool. she was also doing therapy. She was also doing yeah. meditation work. She was doing a lot of the more natural healing methods as well. Right. And it wasn't, as impactful as it was potentially for me, but I noted it. Like, I was like, this seems like something I experienced and I sent her right. to a specialist. Oh, great. Because she was doing some of that work already. Yeah. It wasn't as challenging for her. She didn't have to take as much supplementation. She wasn't feeling the fatigue, the GI stuff. She, right. was, she was able to um, really rebound, if that's the right word. Yep. Even though it's something just take care of for, a little, yeah. for the rest of her life, it wasn't like as stressful for her. So I think it's like, a, like you said, accepting that maybe I have to do a little extra work in some ways, like going to the right doctor or going to the right, um, I see doctor, right? Wellness professional, you know? Yeah. And now it's sure. easier because we can do it virtually. Right? Isn't that amazing? Yeah, I think you're right. And it's interesting. I noticed so I come to the work that I do to being a holistic nurse practitioner and a life coach because I was incredibly sick for the first 30 years of my life. Mm -hmm. Horrible IBS, like really pretty intense. Sure. Heartburn so bad. I couldn't sleep lying down for years. I don't know if you do that one. That's, that's so interesting. I know. It was a, and I had no idea what was going on. Right. I, I mean, it would make a lot of sense. You go to a traditional doctor and they'd say, oh, you know, it's just IBS. Here's some medicine. Which right. Never worked was, for me. Right. And like in the 90s didn't even exist. Like right. Linzess and that stuff like wasn't even on the market yet. Mm -hmm. I don't love Linzess. I don't feel like it really works. But it didn't, that wasn't even an option. So anyway, yeah, like I would lie down and all the acid would fill my mouth. But I didn't realize that's what was happening. I just thought, like, I got tested for sleep apnea, like, which I'm glad someone did that, but yeah, not, not the issue. Anyway, my point is, I come to this work because I was so effing sick. Mm -hmm. And the thing, I've been able to sort of, like, look backwards at the timeline of my life and recognize that it was a decade ago when I started working on noticing, dealing with supporting myself around codependency and perfectionism, mm -hmm. right? And like recognizing that perfectionism sneaks into everything. A hundred percent. Like I, oh the, it seemed, or seemed, around the same time in my life is when I started healing from all that stuff, but I didn't right. really realize I was doing it yet. Mm -hmm. So the, the thoughts affect, not just thoughts, we're going this in a more eloquent way. The thoughts were so normal. They were automatic, that it was hard for me to pinpoint like, oh, that's a perfectionist. Oh, I'm codependent in this relationship or all the relationships that I've been uh -huh. in before. Mm -hmm. and so it was like, it was like busy, phys, phys, my body was like, right. girl, you got to slow down. It was like, you can't do this anymore. Like, I can't, I can't carry you any longer. 
with these behaviors or these thoughts. And it wasn't like I thought they were abnormal because everybody else is like right. coffee for breakfast or, you know, you mm-hmm. got to make this much money to be successful or get these grades or date this person or whatever it was. So the, yes. what, I've, what I've noted in my life was that even as a therapist, right, right, like even someone who's working in the field, I was like, oh, shit, my body is like really pissed at me and yep. I've got to do the work and I had to take a break from my phys- my actual work so I could do the work on my body oh not my everyone God. has the ability to do that but I had totally. to you know sh- I had to shift kind of gears for a little while yeah so I yes, can relate sure. yeah. yeah and I you know I was trying to heal my gut by attending to my physical gut but this is what we're talking about yeah. and you're reflecting back that same experience and I appreciate the mirror right it was by looking at my mental health that I was able to truly heal my gut because I was able to get myself into ventral vagal right we Out talk about of, this all the time too I, mean, I, know yeah, you I love it there, Vegas, right? I love it it's my favorite should I do a one on one do it I love it okay, this girl. is really right. important yeah yeah okay. for even Beautiful. parents too because I do it with parents of kids all the oh, time of too course. right So episode 61 of the Feminist Wellness Mm -hmm. Podcast, which came out two weeks ago, is a polyvagal primer. So if you want to hear, like, I think it's 45 minutes of this, what I'm about to do in like three minutes, go subscribe, download that episode of the Feminist Wellness Podcast. Is there a way I can add it to the comments right now? Um, Yeah. Will you type it in there? Yes. It's a Feminist Wellness Podcast. And there's a link in my bio. So, um, all right. So your vagus nerve, runs from the brain. It's the 10th cranial nerve. It's the longest nerve in the human body. It's called vagus, or vagus means wanderer in Greek because it wanders through the whole body. It goes down, it goes through, it goes down through the middle of you, the middle of the animal, all the way to your bum. And it enervates or gives nerve function to everything along its path. And so it has several branches, and we're going to get into details about the branches. Um, Thank you, baby, right now. Um, But it does, it controls like a vast array of physiologic experiences Mm -hmm. and physiologic capacities. So swallowing the function of your throat, um, your heart and lungs, your diaphragm Mm -hmm. moving up and down, your digestion, Mm -hmm. and in its way uh, impacts thyroid sex hormones, reproductive organs, whether you're pooping or not, Mm -hmm. and whether you're freaking out or not. So let's talk about polyvagal. Um, So vagus nerve, two branches, one, sympathetic. Fight, flight, freeze. There's a lion coming. Mm -hmm. The lion's about to eat me and everyone I know. And everything speeds up because you have to, there's a lion, right? And so at the beginning, your breath gets shallow and fast. And then in a set, like a little later, if you stay there, it goes... It actually gets deeper, which is why taking a deep breath is actually not calming if Mm -hmm, you're unsympathetic, unless you focus on, right? It's actually the out breath that calms you, right? That and is that because it, it, it is that because that actually fills your diaphragm, which is where that nerve is. That so it yeah. actually activates the diaphragmatic breath a little bit more, and that means more calming oxygen to the brain. Yeah. Yes, and you're blowing off CO2. Yeah. So when you blow off CO2, you're temporarily alkalizing the blood. And that, but until your body can rebuffer it into homeostasis, that temporary alkaline state, as your calcium ion channels whoosh, open, so we never give, never give, a, give someone a bag and say, blow into it, obviously. But we know that, but I do. Yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah. Because we uh-huh. always have that reaction, like, calm down, take a deep breath. I'm like, I don't want to. Yeah, no. I don't want to calm down because I can't calm down because my nervous system's jacked up. So Right? right. Totally. Yeah. yeah, it's like the rudest recommendation. Yeah. People don't know. They don't do it on purpose. They're not exactly. trying to be jerk. Exactly. But, like, it's in polyvagal, there's something called biological rudeness, which is, like, when you are – it's something that is – literally experienced by the nervous system yeah. as rude as like a turning away from connection and the most common one in this day and age is like you're at dinner or you're on a call with someone and they're like oh yeah okay yeah yep. totally yeah. look and at my like, reaction even i'm like uh-huh and i, I pull away i'm like this yeah <laughs> you don't feel connected it's, it's not no. it's, you don't feel you don't feel like it's an engagement yeah yeah right and so it sends a signal of unsafety how cool is that I mean, well, shitty, I think about, but cool. But I think about all these parents too. It's crazy. My dog will come up to me and they'll like pat the phone away. You know, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like, I didn't realize that you're paying attention. <laughs> and I put the phone down and, you know, oh. attend to, the, attend to the, the dog most days. Most days. You're also a human who gets to like 
yeah, li live her life. But um, so, the, so you're talking the first branch and the second branch. Right. So the first branch, sympathetic, fight, mm -hmm. flight, freeze, anxiety, panic, worry, stress. Oh my God, how am I going to do this? What's going to happen? Right. Future tripping. Mm -hmm. So you're not present in this moment. You're thinking of five minutes from now, 10 minutes from now, an hour from now, two years from now. When will the pandemic end? When will it end? When will it end? What right? It's going to look like, what are we going to do? Yeah, exactly. How many will die? Like, what's the mask? Do I have a mask? Is my mask good? Like all that worry. Mm -hmm. it, when it has that rush energy versus the thoughtful, like, okay, let me just read the New York times or listen to the saint known as Fauci. Well, he's not a saint, but like the, the good doctor right. Right. known as Fauci. Well, known as Fauci and let's like see what, what Fauci's up to. Let's see what he's saying. Right. It's not that energy of like thoughtful planning. Sympathetic energy is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I always say we have to be sympathetic to the sympathetic nervous system. That's how oh. I remembered it in school. Sympathetic to it. We got to be a little bit like, okay, I see what's happening here and do That's something really different. That's sweet. Use it. Use it. I love, I will. Oh my gosh. I'm, I love that. So in that state, and of note, right, that state used to be reserved for like literal lion mm -hmm. or marauders mm -hmm. or like horrifying, massive attacks on you and your village. And now it's like my boss emailed, my ex texted, my mom yeah. is calling. And it is our body <laughs> reacting to that, too, because it's like, yeah. it's like I always say the saber tooth tiger isn't here, but it's what we it, it's the fear of the saber tooth tiger or whatever, or it's the fear of yeah. well, the, the body literally gets like this sometimes for me, too. And I'm like, OK, what's happening here? I have some more of my own work that right. I've done so I can be aware of it. But I'm not going to lie. It can get like this. Oh, man. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> totally. We can all get like that. Yeah. Yeah. And so in that state, you cannot think so good. Right right? Your cognition is literally slowed and your body is focused on airway, breathing, circulation, heart, lungs, heart, lungs, run, run, mm -hmm. heart, lungs, run. Safety, 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 safety. So it pulls all the blood into the center, heart and lungs to yeah. really focus there. So that your hands might get tingly because where'd the blood go? You might get cold or hot, like the thing can clam me as adrenaline norepinephrine yeah. and then eventually cortisol race through your body mm -hmm. and it means you cannot think clearly right. you also cannot digest make thyroid hormone etc so when we get 10 emails a day back when we were having traditional life and we get 10 emails a day that evoke that what does that do for the yeah body and the brain yeah it um it patterns it so the work we both do is to help people recognize their habitual physiologic and thought patterns because it's important to have attention to both right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what is my body telling me what am i telling my body about 80 percent right. of the communication between mind and body which are one but you know mm -hmm. your left hand and your right hand are both one parts right. of your one body but they sure. are different they are just in concert so 80 percent of communication is body up and then 20% is your interpretation and the signals, the chemical signals that you send whoo, down into your body with your thoughts to create a feeling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so our work um, is to help folks to recognize both of those things so they can begin to shift out of it. So like, oh, okay, I'm starting to get panicky. Okay, I recognize that in my body. I'm going to do the deep exhale. I'm going to go mm -hmm. run some cold water over my hands or warm water, whatever works for you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go drink some, wa drink some water. Um, I'm going to do these things to calm my physiology, to center myself. I may try some movement, some rocking back and forth. Mm -hmm. On my website, at the top of the website, I have a series of free meditations. If you go to victorialbina.com. I saw um, that, yeah. Yeah, and so there's one is an orienting exercise, which is a practice to support um, the nervous system. And those meditations are like literally right there at the top. Um, they're for free, mm -hmm. duh. Yeah, no problem. Um, so you can do an orienting exercise, which is a practice from the somatic world, the body-based therapeutic world, which you are mm -hmm. so well versed in. Um, and you can like, have those things on tap to bring yourself into better alignment so you can ask, what is the thought that I am thinking in response to my physiology? 
Right. And sometimes we can't get to that until we are more regulated in our nervous system. So one exactly. of the things that I give a lot of my clients and I've worked on with myself too is, okay, I've got my like toolkit. Yeah. So that might mean that, and I practice it when I'm not in a crisis. So, oh my gosh. Right? Yeah. so to see if it works. Right. And so what you said, like those ground, like the meditations that you have that are really very soothing. I've listened to several of them and they're like, Oh, you feel like you're in a cocoon. So it Aww. can be something that's activated for people with via voice, someone right. else's voice. For me, generally it's texture and I'll have like um, rooted in somatic work. You know, I'll start with my feet on the ground or I'll notice oh. my toe or my shoe or my, yeah. so on purpose. Yeah. Cold water works wonders, you know, mm -hmm. even if you don't want to mess up your makeup, not like we have back in regular world when we had to put on makeup for certain things. Um, but I would wash my hands with cold water for 30 seconds because I know that that will activate exactly what you're talking about, which is the, it'll give me some sympathy for my sympathetic nervous system or support it in that way. But, also uh, like crystals, you know, things like yeah. that. But I say this because physical touch for me was always the first one. There you are. Yeah. I love that. Here, well, let me grab a selenium. Selenium and cold. Selenite, right? Yeah. Selenite. Oh, selenium. But selenium is what you take to see it, right? But selenium do. Selenium. It's a supplement is a supplement for the thyroid, 200 milligrams a day max. Well, it's I probably in, need that You're too. on it. No, you're on it, don't worry. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> but I will have something that I, I'm grounded, you know what I mean? Yeah. So when you were talking about that, it made me think like, yeah. the meditation, I have some people who resist it, but it's just try it, right? Meditation, right. you said um, that breathing out, what else did you suggest? Cold water. Cold water, orienting. So orienting. just in a nutshell, though I do recommend downloading, because it's free, why not? And they're really soothing. They're like, they really are soothing. You're, like I said at the very beginning, your voice should be an audiobook and it kind of Aww, is. So thank you. They do have like an ASMR kind of like quality. Yeah. The, the universe gave it to you. So yes. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Mm -hmm. So um, the orienting exercise is what you were talking about um, in a different framework of my toe is in my shoe. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm moving my toe. I feel it against the leather. I feel the sock, right? Like getting oriented. Yeah. Brains, because evolution and because survival and because your brain loves you, it believes that its job is to freak the F out mm -hmm. constantly mm -hmm. to protect you from like literally dying. Yeah. And so any chance to make you panic, it's going to take it. Sure. Right? Right. And one of the things brains are really, really dedicated to doing is to solving problems. Mm -hmm. And so if your brain thinks there's something coming to eat you and that's a problem and it has to work on it and work on it and work on it, it's going to stay like a dog with a bone or a mm -hmm. toddler pulling on your pant leg saying, mama, 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 <laughs> getting louder and louder. Right. right. Until you pay attention to it. Right. Until you give it a job. Right. So if, you know, one of your dogs is like, Ah, you give them something to chew on and then they're like I don't need which to. is exactly what I do so I got a sock they have like, like socks we put a treat in it and we throw it but it's not, and it's attending to but it's attending yeah. to the, the the anxiety it's attending to the yep. noise nobody it wants something to do maybe it's attention but giving them something to distract I wouldn't yep. suggest that with kids but with animals it's fine um but it's, Wait, again so don't give children treats in a sock yeah that's, that's all I'm saying yeah I just I'm gonna just write that um, just in, case. in just my in case. parenting manual got yeah. it but what I do notice is when I, when I've worked with kids, especially little kids who are dysregulated, if I acknowledge them and I you know, sit with them for a second, yeah, they automatically do that. Right. They automatically have the out breath. Uh-huh. I don't have to throw a sock at them. <laughs> with them. You know? Or at them. Or at them. But, but they sometimes. do that because they're not filled yeah. with the thoughts that us as adults have created from childhood, from all our experiences, from the outside world, from the things right. that make us feel like we're going insane when it's, we're really just trying to, they're just automatic. Right. So it's interesting. Animals and kids do this generally pretty naturally when we yeah. attend to them and give them some attention. It's so true. We all just want love and safety. Mm -hmm. Safe. Yeah, exactly. Like that's like literally Maslow it. was right, right? Maslow, Maslow was right. right. Yeah. And if you don't know what that is, look up Maslow's hierarchy right. of human needs. Yeah. Um, it's like therapist, public health, nurse, et cetera, school 101. It's like yeah. the first week they taught us these things. So look at Maslow. But yes, uh, safety and love and connection, it's all we want. So when your brain is screaming for that, orienting to time and place, mm -hmm. orienting in your own body, meaning to literally orient, like yeah. the first day of school when they're like, here's the bathroom, here's the water fountain, mm -hmm. now here's your classroom. Now you're oriented. Yeah. 
we do that to give your brain that's like, hi, hi, am I safe? Am I okay? Am I, am I okay? Am I safe? Oh. Yeah, right. You give it a job. And so then if it can think not about future tripping, not about worrying, but can just, <sighs> yeah. I am in a room. There's a light on to my left. There's skylights above. I see the light through my closed eyes. It smells like lavender. I feel the chair holding me up. My feet are on a crinkly rug, right? Et cetera, et cetera. Exactly. That's it. It's, I already feel calmer, right? But the oh, I'm so thing, I, I'm, it's so funny because when I'll talk about this and now that we're in, you know, quarantine virtual therapy, it's interesting yeah. with my clients and I'll, I'll be doing this like, so show Find five things in your room that are a wreck. Yes. Like what? Why? What? Or that, and it's, yeah. it gets them to think about something else. Yeah. Or, you know, it can even be as simple as, can you find two things that are um, circular, right? And show right. me them. And these are adult clients. Yeah. Okay? These aren't like five-year-old kids. Right. And I say that because they're like, why? But it, it, where is the door? Or even if we, in sessions or stuff like that. Where, so tell me right. about a comforting place. What was that like? Yeah. What colors was it? What textures? Orienting right. your body. Yeah through descriptive words, which yeah. is mindfulness 101. Yep. Yeah. And it's, I run these, um, I'm just about to start a six month masterclass. I on saw that. In codependency. It's exciting. It's um, almost full. So that's pretty exciting. Okay. Well, well, I'll put that, I'll put all that information up too with when they're going oh, to the video thank as well. You. Yeah. For really sure. Exciting. And um, the first thing we do with, and this is adults is, attend to feelings because people don't know how to feel 100%. their feelings in their body. So I'm we curious. Don't talk. No one was taught. No, no. no one was. I think we were literally taught the opposite, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. Like you have to raise your hand to go to the bathroom. You have to raise your hand to go drink water. Right. You need to like, <laughs> you can't just oh. the glass. Right. By having a human physiologic need. Exactly. Yeah. Much less like, you know, and then bring in the patriarchy telling us, you know, good girls are quiet. Good girls are po are polite. I mean, and you grew up. I'm not going to call Texas the South because, like, I, know I grew up in Seattle, Seattle, and then I moved to Texas. So my experience was very different because oh, I was right. used to a very uh, Montessori-like environment, right. and then I moved to a place where it was like scantrons. And why are you not finishing your test on time? Because I am in a panic because I didn't know. <laughs> I can't read all this thing. It, the classroom smells weird, and I've never taken a test like this before. And they're like, something's wrong. I was like, no, I mean, it was just anxious. No. And I'd course. never, I'd never been in a situation because I moved. But I say this because many times I see this with parents who I'm talking to. I'm like, I don't think that they're not trying. I think that they're actually having like panic right now. And every time yeah. they're in the classroom, when the AC turns on and when they get that smell and when there's distraction, yeah. like the kids over here twirling around. Right. Because they remember everything that they said in class. Right. They remember what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. We just can't put their pen to paper when there's too much pressure on the right. line. Yeah. Receive pressure. Yeah. Two things. I want to ask you how you teach people to feel their feelings. But first, can I address that air conditioner thing? Yes. So in polyvagal theory, the work of Stephen Porges, PhD, who's like freaking amazing. His book is not super intelligible. Like it's definitely written in like high nerd it's boring for regular people. I've, I, there's some studies that I've, or not studies. Um, I've read some lay terminology papers yeah. on him too. And, um, oh, and some videos. Here. This is, this is the jam. Mm -hmm. I know it's backwards for folks. The polyvagal theory, uh, theory and therapy, Deb Dana, of course it took a woman and a therapist to put it into English. So this is still like a little therapist talk. Mm -hmm. um, but it's much more English yeah. than Porges' original book. I, I but, remember that book. I was like this. What? Well, I like this because I like to, to geek out on that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was still like, okay, I got it. It was, it was like a research yeah. paper. Seriously, actually, I think it probably was. No, it, it, it <laughs> literally was. Um, but so one of the things that he talks a lot about is, you know, the we didn't get to the other two parts of the vagus nerve, which the second branch is parasympathetic. And so that has two parts, ventral vagal, and dorsal vagal. So ventral, it's all, most of the stuff's just Latin. Ventral means the front body, yeah. dorsal means the back. I remember dorsal by remembering dorsal fin. fin. Yeah. Yeah. And also, um, yeah, so just like the back of the animal. Mm -hmm. And so ventral vagal is the front. And that's our eyes, our ears, our nose, our mouth, 
And so what we're doing, so ventral vagal is the sensation of being safe, secure, connected. And so everything that we've been talking about, bringing yourself back, what we're, that's the way we talk because we're used to this, but we're talking about coming into ventral vagal, right? You and I. And so ventral vagal is, hi, everything's okay. Yeah. And so we recognize that with prosody of voice. Mm-hmm. A smooth, soothing, quiet, melodic tone, Mm -hmm. like you and I both naturally speak in. In sessions, yes. (laughs) You're like, let me, yelling at the dog or the husband. Um, But, okay. Yeah. No, no, yes. But especially when you, this this is the natural thing to do, I think, for a lot of people. Yeah. When you see somebody who's in crisis or their their or child or somebody who see your see a pain, you automatically it's I'm like getting on their level. Yeah. And your voice does soften. And when you soften yeah. your voice, children and adults of any age respond. So it means it's that we have to do we have to do the stuff that you're talking about with us before we can attend to the kid or the, yeah. the other person. That's such a good point, right? If you are dysregulated in your own nervous system, it's so much more challenging to show up. Oh my god, it's Excellent so hard. Point. It's so much it's, harder. And yeah. I will literally take a few minutes sometimes before a session if I have to be late because I'm a little dysregulated. And I will do the breathing work that you offer. I a lot of it actually, or I'll do some of my own like meditation stuff just so I can be present. And I'll apologize for my tardiness for whatever reason. Sure, but sure, I'm like, fine. the rest of the session would have right. gone. Oh yeah, pretty poorly I think because I would yeah. be taking on a lot of that. So the frontal, I said the frontal lobe, but you're talking about what is it? The, um, Ventral vagal. Ventral vagal, so. Is the front. And so what are the things we're looking for? So I want everyone watching to feel the difference between these two smiles. Okay, feel how that feels in your body. Hi! And then feel this. Yeah. It's like, again, like, what was that, right? Yeah. So we are, you know, our culture is obsessed with getting rid of crow's feet. They physiologically signal safety. So no Botox there. Okay. No Botox. Right. And like smile lines. Yeah. Right. Like even like like, a grandma. That's why people are lately like, do you feel comfortable with an older, I say older, but you know, a grandmother, her voice is naturally like that. Her face is naturally, kids naturally respond to that too. I'm saying kids just because of our own inner child. Right. Physiologic children, inner children's, Mm -hmm. we all react to like, hi. Mm -hmm. Right. So and even with little kids who don't have these wrinkles, their cheeks raise. Mm-hmm. And we feel like our actual nervous system responds to that. Yeah. So in the thought work that I teach and the thought work you teach in your way, one of the most important things is to get into this safe and social connection. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have someone, another human, because you're quarantining alone or you're in a fight with your quarantine person. Right. You can actually go look in the mirror and smile at yourself. And you can picture someone you love, like a grandma kind of character. Mm -hmm. I will often call in Dr. Maya Angelou. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will call in Adrian Rich. (laughs) I'll call in my dog or like my rabbit from when I was a little kid. Right? Yeah. I like call these energies in. We call it resourcing. But we'll call these energies in to support us and to help us get ventral vagal. Because the work I teach is that 20% that's brain down. I call it thought work, where you're Mm -hmm. looking at the thought that creates your feeling and sends that chemical signal through the body. And then you take action based on that signal and create a result in your life. But you can't do that if you're sympathetic or if you're in dorsal shutdown. So just real quick, so dorsal shutdown, um, I'm just gonna put it real elegantly, is is this. (laughs) Yes. Um, I'm not here. Don't look at me. Oh, God. No, no. Yeah. Ah, right? It's, well, um... we, we would also call that in some ways, like whenever I talk about the freeze response, yes. it's kind of like back in the cave woman days and the cave yes. people days. Yeah. We, if we saw a saber-toothed tiger, our nervous system would try and just go into the bush. Like, I don't, right. I'm going to stop. I'm not even going to breathe. I'm going to freeze up so that it doesn't know I'm right there. And so if we perceive <sighs> fearful thoughts or we perceive any sort of fear in front of us or perceived like in terms of, I don't know, like my boss is emailing me. So I've, I've been known to do that before. That's one of my responses is this, but I know it now. Right. Because I've been doing the work. So right. I know I'm going to either do this, avoid, hide. And then I wake up and then I'm like this. I'm like, oh wait a second. I feel myself doing it. I'm bringing it back. I'm using the things that you've talked about. Right. right. But a lot of people think that, oh, I just, 
a lot of people don't realize that that is such a natural thing that our bodies do. Totally. It's so much more validating. It's, it gives us an ability to actually use the science as like, hold on, this is what's happening. Right, right. It's not just me. <laughs> right. It's right. everybody else. And, and it's our body's way of responding. It totally. And the more love we can give to that response, yeah. right? So what I teach people is whether you're in sympathetic or dorsal shutdown, which I also remember as your back is against the wall of yeah. the cave. Like I love the going into the bush because yes, it can happen anywhere. Mm -hmm. But it also just helps you to remember like, oh, my back's against the wall. Yeah. That's what that feels like. That's playing possum. That's yeah. dissociation or even like dissociation light, which can look like. It's true. Yeah. Good word for that, actually. <sighs> Thank you. Like, you know, you're like, oh, hey, babe, I really want to have gluten-free pizza tonight. And your partner's like, no, you know, like you get into it. And then particularly for folks with a history of codependency and perfectionism, which are two thought patterns that lead us to want to take care of the world before ourselves, make other people happy before ourselves, people please get external validation. Like, mm -hmm. do you love me? Am I okay? Am I safe? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Right? I mean, we get everything it. we were taught growing up about mm. how to get ahead and how to be how a to be a woman mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. but it's 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 so i like the way that you're framing it because people i mean i've read a lot of the books on this too. yeah and one of the books i read that was life-changing was the second one of what was it um facing codependence by oh, yeah i have it in my office yeah my it's office, my but, brain's farting too but yeah because it wasn't about you're in a codependent relationship with an alcoholic or what I'd always yeah, been yeah. taught, which is like, you know, substance abuse. It was like, oh, no, no, no. This is self-esteem issues. This is anxiety 101. This is the stuff that no one talks about. And it, this too, we are mm -hmm. in that kind of fog. Mm -hmm. And so we are woke to it, essentially. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so when that is your thought norm, um, you can go into that shutdown like dissociation light. So like real dissociation, people throw that word around. Real dissociation right, is right. like someone after a tsunami when they're sitting there. Like and you literally. Can't even, yeah, you can't even make eye contact. They're not there. Yep. And that's a terrifying thing, but it's a beautiful gift from your nervous system. Mm -hmm. So like dissociation light, as I've come to call it, is the like, well, no, this isn't dissociation. This is uh, what I was about to do is immobilization, right? It's that vent dorsal vagal of like, okay, fine. Yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah, yeah. We'll, do, we'll do whatever you want. Like gluten exactly. will make me sick for like the next five days, but uh, yeah, fine, I'll eat it, whatever. Right. Okay, it's exhaustion fine. and fatigue almost in some ways too, because your nervous system is likely fatigued. Right, right. It's like, you know, in episode, I don't remember where adrenal fatigue seven, I talk about how like adrenal fatigues, like that's not that science words, but so no, I, I listened to that when I sent it to several people, because I was like, this is what I'm talking about. And you said it really well. So that's in the feminist wellness podcast, which I'll put a link to as well. Thank you. Um, but keep going. I'm sorry. I don't want to interrupt. Oh, you, no, but... no, please. Um, but yeah, so that's what that dorsal shutdown can look like of like, I just effing can't. Um, and they're really typical with codependency and professions. Oh, that's what I was about to say. Um, episode 55 of the Feminist Wellness Podcast is about uh, intergenerational codependency because I completely mm -hmm. agree with you. You don't have to have grown up with major trauma, with chaos. Uh, you don't have to have grown up with someone actively uh, using or abusing a substance or alcohol. Like you don't, that doesn't have to be your story for you to have codependent thought habits. Like you just literally said it so perfectly. It comes down to self-esteem, self-worth, self-love, valuing yourself, but like really truly acting as a person who values, the, values themselves so hard. I call it supportive parenting now. Like re you, instead of like reparenting, I say supportive parenting Ooh. because our parents, a lot of our parents did the best they could, right? And so yeah. I see in some, there's a lot of people who want to blame and blame, but that just yeah, brings up the shame cycle. So yeah. it's like reparenting re is also a good word. I would say supportive parenting is like the parent who's like, hey, you know what? Like, here's why you eat kale. 
and looking it up for yourself or like, here's why kale might be good for you. Or, right. you know, maybe you need to go outside right now and with a mask on and do some exercise because right. it's going to feel good. Even though I want to sit inside and watch Netflix or whatever. It's right. this kind of gentle reparenting in some ways with some support, mm. but also not what any of us necessarily grew up with society wise. Society told us that, you know, you have, that's what could have messed up our self esteem. It doesn't mean that you had to have an abusive parent, right? It's no. like environmental mm -hmm. and biological and the environment yep. could mean that teacher in fifth grade and the friends that you had when you were a little kid, you know? Yeah. So I, I always try and, we can't just blame one system, essentially. It all messes uh, this part up, right? Right, right. And in that, we get to also look at the systems of oppression that mm -hmm. so many of us are held down by as women, as queer folk, people of color, trans folk, differently abled folks, um, neuro, uh, neurologically different folks, mm -hmm. right? Who, folks who are neurologically atypical, right? right? on and on and on mm -hmm. right immigrants I, i'll i'll go i you could go for, yeah but it's, but it's the hours. environment right it's the environment that that shapes that right yeah and that is the challenge when talking about polyvagal theory because you know it is so we are so impacted differently impacted by the world right and the body has known to do similar things based on different, even exper different experiences. So I think that's the beauty of it, right? Yeah. It's like our body's going to respond in these tip these ways. And once we realize that our body's doing that, that's how we heal. Fuck yeah. Right? Like that's how we, I mean, that, that's how putting it, like I can sit, I sit here and I'll do these groups of people and you, you do the same thing, right? Yeah, thank yep. you. Mm -hmm. Well, because that's, I think that's the way we, we, we want to make it in some ways more, I want you to finish what you're saying about the frontal and mm. the, um, the dorsal, because I think it's important, but the truth is, is this, impacts everybody. Literally anybody, everybody, anybody. Everybody. My animals, animals, yep. you know, yeah. children, everybody. And so being yep. able to recognize that this is a physiological response. This is our body protecting us. And here's what generally can happen for different people. Right. Gives us an opportunity to be able to help others that are helping yep. ourselves too. Yeah. And to recognize so many people come to me and I, I'm sure you'll be like, mm -hmm. with the story, I'm broken. Mm -hmm. yeah. I need to get fixed. I need to like be healed. And I'm like, right. no, baby, you, you like, you just are dysregulated, right? It's like the volume's up too loud, right? Yeah. So we just need to turn the volume down on sympathetic, turn it up on ventral vagal, turn it down on dorsal vagal, right? Mm -hmm. Or find healthy ways. Cause you can have an immobilization experience that's sure. like really pleasant. Like last night when I took six milligrams of melatonin and like, was talking to my partner. I was like, I, I love you and I love yeah. my life. And I just was like, so ventral vagal, but dorsal. Yeah, but it was effective because it was it, amazing. Yeah. Melatonin and, for the win. Yeah. yeah. And like Shavasana, right? So, like the end of the breath work practices I teach at the end of yoga those moments of saying like, I am going to have this restorative experience yeah. of lying the F down and just like getting the most in my body I've ever been, but kind of, but leaving my consciousness, right? And being able to allow yourself to do that. I think what I'm noticing for a lot of people these days, which is a good thing is like, wow, I didn't realize I was talking to a client the other day and she was like, I used to sprint to yoga to do something restorative and then go to my, and she, you know, I could have told her this, so I was doing the face previously, but she goes, so now I'm doing it at my house mm -hmm. and I'm easing into it. I'm taking the extra beats yeah. at the end. I don't have to rush because this is no matter what anyone takes from, I think this whole experience, whoever knows, I hate saying this experience because it makes me feel like minimizing, but I'll explain that in a second if we all recognize a little bit more about how our thought patterns work and how our yes. body works, I think that's what the, that's the golden nugget here because that restorative piece, we can't rush. Nope. We have to take action and we have to have, a, you know, a um, intention that like, this is what I mm -hmm. want to go in for. Or this is what I'm, I'm resourcing at this moment because I right. want to feel better. That's the intention. Right. Yep. But we can't rush it. Nope. Yeah. You can't skip steps in healing. Like the number of people who come to me and they're like, oh, I had all this trauma. I'm so codependent. I'm all this perfectionist. But I like, I went to Peru and I took ayahuasca and like, why am I not fixed? And I'm like, well, um, she's a magical plant, but yes. you need, you can't, 
Yeah. There's yeah, work. Yes. There's work yes. that needs yes. to be done. Yeah. There's a little bit of work that needs to be done too, because the thoughts are so pervasive, and they, the thoughts yeah. are what I think really is what it's about. So when yeah. you're when you're doing that restorative work, what does that yeah. what else does that look like? Uh, to bring yourself into ventral vagal. Yeah. Um, it really, for me, starts with awareness, acceptance, and then action. So mm -hmm. our American culture is obsessed with action, like we were just talking about. Like, go do the thing and you'll get fixed. Go do the yoga. The yoga will fix you. Fly to Peru. Fly to Peru. You yeah, can't fix right now, but... Right, um, right, right, right. Poor Peru. Actually, they did a great job. They shut down the country really, really quickly. I have friends in Peru. Yeah, good. Yeah. Seriously. So, yeah, definitely. So, so anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, don't get me started on what's happening here. I would, love to. I would love to. Yeah. And I think that's, that's another, a separate I, live. I, uh -huh. Let's do that next week. Yeah. But for now, back to anxiety, folks. We're here. Uh, we're here for it. So, okay. So the question, how do we get ourselves into ventral vagal? The first thing to remember, and I'm going to hop back into awareness, acceptance, action, is that the human animal is built for connection. So people think you hear the lion right? Or you get the email, the scary thing happens and you're like, fight or flight. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. We look for another human. We look for a smile. Yeah. We look, right? We look for connection. And you see it Safety. happening like in street harassment. People are like, whoa, whoa. And like, don't, dude, no, nah, it's good. We're cool. We're cool. We're cool. You know, like you want to connect. Yeah. That's why this you, is so hard for so many people. Yeah. I mean, every, for all of us, because they forget that connection can be like this virtually and it can be with yourself yeah yeah hand on your heart mm -hmm. that long exhale we were talking about earlier to help you get ventral vagal calm your physiology mm -hmm. recenter regulate and so yeah recognizing that that the first human impulse is ventral vagal is safe and social is yeah. connection which means it's your birthright you yeah. can do it it might be some work and that's okay Right, because right. you can do hard things. Right, right. You know how. So uh, when I say awareness, acceptance, action, what I mean is awareness, like we've been talking about this whole time, of your own uh, nervous system patterns, body up, and your own cognition patterns, brain down, mm -hmm. and the thoughts that you're, you're, uh, you have in your brain that create the feelings in your body. Awareness, 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 right? Those habits. And then... The next step is acceptance. And this, I think, is the most challenging part. I'd love your take on that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you just said yes, right? Accepting that I do the thing, right? Because people are like, no, 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 I'm not codependent. No, I'm not, I'm not, I don't do, I don't do that. I don't, are you still we, there? Oh, we, hi. We yeah. call it, we call it radical, so in a lot of the work that we do, and I used yeah. to, when I explain it, I say it's radical awareness. Yeah, you got to. So it's like, I don't like what's going on. Right. Totally. Like, but I'm accepting what's going on so that I can actually activate what my more of my, I will say my frontal lobe, but yeah. You know, and I yeah, can figure out how to yeah. problem solve versus yeah. sitting in the, sitting in the, when we accept what's happening again, different mm -hmm. word, I might say it would be, you don't have to like it. You just have to accept what is right now. We can't change right. it. We can stay stuck in suffering, which that will do if we stay there. Or we can say, I got to try the thing that's going to make me feel, maybe make me feel better, but I got to be willing to try it. And that means I got to go to the four sessions or I've got to sign up for that one course. I've got to put, I've got to do it. I may not want to do it. Supportive parent comes in. It's like, you can do it. You know, but I have to accept that yeah. this doesn't feel good. This feels bad. This does not feel well. It doesn't make me feel yeah. bad. So you don't yep. have to like it, but we have to acknowledge and accept that it's occurring in order for us to make a change. Right. And it doesn't mean condoning it either, which I heard Not in what all. you're saying, right? We're never I like, think. yeah. A lot of times when I use the word acceptance, my, my clients will be like that because it implies, they think somewhere along right. the way we were brought up like acceptance means that we're in support of it. I don't like it. Right. I don't support it. And it's nope. happening. Right? It's real. It's real. Yeah. 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 But, but um, we accept I'm it. We can then heal. Exactly. Episode 45 of the Feminist Wellness Podcast. No, they're, they're, um, they're just so, they're, they're so, they're bite-sized. So I can listen to yeah. them when I'm walking and stuff yeah. like that. And it's, they're, you know, around the house. And it's, it's interesting because it touches on these so well. So episode yeah, 45 is uh, wishing isn't enough, something like that. Yeah. Which is like about acceptance and action. Yeah. And so, yeah, then we have to, we get to take action. Once you make the cognitive shift of like, listen, I have to try this. It's not just like, okay, I'm, 
because how are we going to get our feet to walk to the AA meeting went back and or how are we going to get ourselves to call the therapist or you know right. reach out and type the email yeah it's right the, the computer's right here like I can do it but if I don't accept it mm -hmm. that I need to mm -hmm. and it could possibly be helpful then I'm right. not I'm going to stay stuck in this cycle amen so yeah the, the actions where we need connection to though sometimes right, right. like that where you were saying the mirror work or yes. even like talking to a supportive friend on the phone yeah. while you're doing the action. Exactly. Yeah. I want to like zoom us way back to like 600 hours ago of when course. we were talking about learning how to feel our feelings in our body. We talked yeah. about washing your hands and focusing on that sensation of the water. Yeah. I teach folks to uh, eat like a, their favorite berry or like some other smooshy fruit yeah, thing yeah, yeah. with a lot of flavor, like a strawberry, a raspberry, a blackberry, and eat it so slowly and like experience that whole thing as a way to like start to get in touch with being a human. Cause mm -hmm. right. That dissociation can make us literally not feel anything in our bodies except pain mm -hmm. often. Um, I'm so curious cause I think of you as such a pro in this world. What are some of your other favorite ways that you teach people how to feel their feels? Well, generally for me, when people come to me, they, they have a lot of thoughts. So one of the first things I do is I try and remember, like you had said something and it reminded me of what I was just talking to a client about the other day, which was like, I can hear the anxiety pounding at the door. It's there. Mm -hmm. I see it. It's right there. And once mm -hmm. we acknowledge that, or, you know, whatever the emotion is, it right. can be every emotion, by the way, right. like, I think a lot of people just think, oh, I have to have one, like you can have 57 and that's right. totally fine because at least you're acknowledging that there's some loud noise knocking at the conscience, right? That's, mm -hmm. I'm here. Yeah. And so when we accept that it's like ringing the doorbell and it's like, hello, pay attention to me, we can pause for a second and cope ahead, or we can Ooh. attend to it and say like, okay, what, why are you here? What do we need to work on? And we may not know why, like that's okay not to know yeah. why, but I'm feeling this feeling. So then I need to, before I even go answer the door in my mind. Um, yeah, yeah. I love that. I may need to go do some of the, the specific breathing, or I may need to go do some resourcing. I will also recommend that people distract for a minute, like mm. set a timer to distract. So distracting for me always had a negative connotation because you know, mm. ADHD, right? Sure, like, sure, oh, don't sure. get distracted. But it's like, you know, let's get purposely distracted. So yeah. I'll, set, I'll say set a timer for like two minutes and go clean up like one drawer or go um, do some intense exercise for just a minute, some jumping right. jacks and push ups because I want yep. to get that more adrenaline and that adrenaline right. out. And then I might do a deep breath or a couple of deep breaths, or I'll listen to a guided meditation. But I, right. and I find that distracting from the stimulus sometimes on purpose, as much as yep. possible, that could be Love with something that. squishy. Yeah. It could be whatever. I, I've got kids right now or say kids, young women and young adults who are in their thirties. I don't know why I'm saying kids who are like maybe taking up needlepoint or they're watching something oh, on fun. YouTube and they're doing something to follow it. Right. So what we're doing is we're distracting with something that can at least give them a healthy way of coping for a second and then coming back to it. Okay. What's up anxiety. I'm a little bit more regulated right now. What's going on. What do I need to attend to and how can I cope with it? So I try and use different ways depending on the person's learning style, but you know, I really preface for so many people, like these are automatic. They're not your, they're your thoughts, but you didn't create them. You didn't wake up today. Mm. Oh, today I feel like panicking. Mm -hmm. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All the negative thoughts from about how I feel about myself, please join yeah, me in this can journey I get some of anger. Can I get some disappointment? Rage, cool. Frustration. So I like to separate worry. it. Right. Yeah. I like to separate it because it's not their choice. It's automatic based on the experiences they've had and what's happening right. currently. But when we accept that, key word, accept that I didn't choose these and they're interfering with my life. Oh, there's a space versus action oh, and reaction. Wow. There's space now. And if you've done a lot of work on your, I say work like breathing, yeah. exactly the work that you can say, breath work. Like I've done a lot of Kundalini stuff for yeah. my meditations, which has been helpful, like shorter, but like that's been helpful for me because it's like, there is a pause between action and reaction yeah. and recognizing that that thought is so deeply embedded and I may not be able to fix that thought, but I can become aware of when it's knocking on the right. door. I love that. I knew you'd have brilliance on that point. Thanks. Thank you. Well, Thank I think you. that it depends on the person, you know, and everything yeah. I do these days and have done for so long is rewind back to here's the science behind it. Like I promise yeah. I'm not just saying, Oh, it's, it's, it's not just you. No, I'm saying it right. really isn't just you. Here's what happens right. biologically to your nervous system, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Yep. Yeah. It's like for real. Yeah. 
So the thing you were saying about codependency that you have, that you're offering is really, oh. really exciting. And it's also, a, I think, a new way of looking at what codependency could look like. Mm -hmm. I, I know you probably have a podcast on this, and I will have to go find that one in particular, because the behaviors that we do unconsciously that are codependent, what are this, just what are some of those that people can understand it in your opinion? Oof, people pleasing, externalizing, Oof. not valuing ourselves, not How going can we to do pee. it? How can we do not going to pee? Thank you for saying that because right? the thing is, is our body literally shuts it off at some point too. Like I've been, <laughs> I remember early on in my career, I'd be like, oh, I don't have to pee. I'll just go to the next client. And I wouldn't even remember until the end of the day. This sounds crazy, but my body no, my no. Nervous system was stuck. Like kind of like this, like, sure. Uh-huh. That's how it felt, right? <laughs> you make the best faces. Yeah. Yes. That was, that was uh, your bladder yeah. being like, well, then for forget about you lady. Just like if I was running away from a saber tooth tiger, my bladder wouldn't be working. Yeah, it wouldn't get those signals. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, feeling your physiologic experience but denying or negating it because in your head, it's more important to take care of everyone else. The right. next client, the next meeting, the next call from your boss, the next email, the next PowerPoint, the next college class, the next, the next, the next. And me further and further and further and further down on my own like to-do list, my own priority list. This is codependency. This is also perfectionism, right? Because you want to appear so perfect. So codependency and perfectionism have a lot of overlaps. They don't always, they're not always like the same thing. Um, I'm doing a free webinar. I did one last week about codependency. There's a link in my bio. Folks can go get yeah. that replay. Um, and then I, so many people wanted to come but couldn't. So I figured I would like do another one but mix it up a little bit. So sure. I'm doing this one on per perfectionism on Monday. I'm going to be talking hella nerdy because you know me. I love it. Uh -huh. Perfectionism rooted in anxiety. Uh-huh. And codependency in some ways. And codependency often. Yeah, so codependency is, um, you know, putting that spotlight on everyone else. Like I was yeah. saying earlier, if... I need to know, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? So that I can feel okay. And it's that story. If I can control everyone, it's false control. If I can control everyone and get them to behave differently, then oh, I will feel differently. Mm -hmm. And that is just total BS. Totally. Because yes. your thoughts create your feelings. You can feel better like that. Yeah. I think about it from when I was a kid and I remember at Christmas time, um, if I didn't get something on my list, right? And I remember I parents would be like, well, Santa, you know, whatever the story was that your parents were talking sure, about. Sure. That. Um, for anybody who still believes in Santa, sure. But sure, sure, there was this yeah. disappointment um, yeah. and this valid disappointment because if I had that toy, I would be happy, little kid brain, right? And right. so I think about how this goes into an, as an adult. If I get that job or if I get that right. validation or if I get right. my kid learns how to play the piano, then I'll feel like a good parent or a good right. whatever. And I remember it takes me back to my childhood in some ways, because it was like, I remember being like, I didn't even really want that toy anyways. And I would move on, right? If I could move on from that bicycle that I didn't get, that my friends got or whatever the thing was. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And realize all the other toys I had. Right. Then what would happen? I would, nice. when I was able to move away from that. So now when I notice I'm hyper-focused on something, this is what I just do naturally now mm. with a little bit of like, yeah, I'm, sure. I'm hyper-focused on this. Oh my God, it has to happen this way. And then I'm like, wait, there's so many other possibilities, just like there's so many other toys I could play with, right? Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to do, but it's, when we do the work that you're talking about, breathing, taking a break, noticing what our body needs, we can separate from that, that, that need. Yeah, absolutely. But I know we only have a few minutes remaining, so I yeah. want to make sure that you get, finish your, finish your amazing talk about this because it's so important. Perfectionism oh, you're so sweet. Monday, to, this Monday? Yeah, mon the day after tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> it's for free. Uh, it's at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can go to the link in my bio. Awesome. Uh, I'm at Victoria Albina Wellness. It's at the top of the screen. Um, and I'll just say hi, and then that'll put my handle up there. Boop. And, and I'll, just... when I repost this, I'm going to put all that in there, too. Oh, thanks, yeah. babe. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I just want to share these free resources. I have a free mm -hmm. weekly podcast called Feminist Wellness on all the channels. So good. All these free I'm going live pretty much every day and I'm doing awesome. it's, it's been so much fun um I'm still figuring out how to put them in IGTV 
We'll figure it out together. I've been Wait, doing some research, so don't worry. I've got your back here. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Thank if you, anyone baby. has resources, please let us Ow! know, too. Right? I yeah. keep uploading, but it won't upload. Anyway, whatever. So that will get sorted. And we got our crystals. Uh, we got our crystals. We're doing, we're doing all right. And, um, yeah, free podcast. Lots of free webinars. Lots of free content here. Follow me here. M, do you know any good books people should read? I have so many. I'm going to post some very, very soon. Anybody my book, too, oh, yes. your my book? book is back here. Yeah. But What's I will. What's it called? Express no. Yourself. Yeah.